Hello and welcome everyone. I am Tremaine Wright, the chair of the Cannabis Control Board. Recognizing that we have all board members present, I am pleased to call to order the second meeting of the Cannabis Control Board and to welcome all of you who are watching virtually. It is our hope that in the near future, we will be able to safely have these meetings in person. For our members and guests, this meeting will be recorded and the recording and transcript will be available to the public on the Office of Cannabis Management's website, cannabis.ny.gov. Today's agenda will include a welcome and some brief remarks from, my, uh, from me, review and approval of the meeting minutes from our first um, board meeting held on October 5th, a review of the OCM employment items, consideration of medical cannabis program regulations, a report from the Office of Cannabis Management Executive Director, Chris Alexander, a brief update on outreach and education, an announcement about the next Cannabis Control Board meeting, and then we will adjourn. As previously stated, the first Cannabis Control Board meeting was held on Tuesday, October 5th, 2021. The board, OCM team, and I want to, wanted to ensure we maintain momentum, thus we work diligently to schedule this meeting today. I'd like to provide you with an update on what we've been working on since the first meeting of the Cannabis Control Board within our three key priorities, staffing, stakeholder engagement, and meeting our statutory requirements. First, as it relates to staffing, the executive director and I have been, we have continued to focus on bringing top talent to the Office of Cannabis Management. We have been busy canvassing, reviewing resumes, and interviewing. We wanna thank the public for the tremendous interest in working for their, the amount of interest that they have expressed for working at the Office of Cannabis Management. It has allowed us to recruit a team of energetic, enthusiastic, and highly trained candidates for the office. We also have continued to work with our partners in government to ensure a smooth transition of DOH staff to the new OCM office. The transition, of, the transition is currently underway. I have had the privilege of meeting and getting to know some of the medical and cannabinoid hemp program staff over the past couple of weeks. And I wanna thank them for their tireless work in managing these important programs. There is a tremendous amount of knowledge and subject matter expertise which they are bringing with them to OCM. And that will carry the office forward. And I'm looking forward to continuing our work together. Next. Our work to engage stakeholders is just getting started. I made my first public, um, official public appearance since being appointed Cannabis Control Board Chair at the New York State Association of Counties meeting last week. Additionally, I conducted site visits to cultivation and processing facilities in the Mid-Hudson and Capital Regions with fellow board member Jen Metzger. As our office continues to grow, and our operations expand. We are dedicated to being in more communities for conversations around this new industry. We look forward to having you join us for discussions regarding how this industry will impact health, safety, equity, and economic development. Your engagement and input will help shape our state's future. Lastly, but certainly not least, is our responsibility to meet the statutory obligations under the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act. In an effort to meet these obligations, the office has prioritized drafting the medical home cultivation regulations. These regulations designed to help ex expand patient access will be posted for public comment shortly. Executive, um, Executive Director Chris Alexander and I will speak more on this later. I'd like to make, one, make another point about the statutory requirements of the MRTA. One of the primary goals of legalization is harm reduction, ensuring access to safe, tested, 
regulated cannabis products. As a reminder to all, we do not yet have state regulated adult use cannabis products on the market. We have not authorized recreational sales. We are hearing many examples of sales of marijuana products by individual vendors and retail locations. However, they are not licensed, nor are they selling regulated products. They, there are currently 38 medical dispensing facilities across the state. We do not have any adult use nor recreational dispensaries. Any individual selling cannabis or marijuana products in these unlicensed dispensaries, pop-up shops, or markets is not licensed, nor are they selling safe, tested products. I also wanted to share that any unlicensed sale or distribution of cannabis remains illegal. While gifting or transferring cannabis under the possession limit between um, adults who are 21 years or older without any money paid for or services provided is legal. Gifting does not include instances in which cannabis is given away at the same time as another transaction, nor when it is offered or advertised in conjunction with an offer for the sale of goods or services. There are no legal producers of cannabis other than those whose production is intended for medicinal use. The cannabis being exchanged and the transactions just described, those remain illicit. There is no gray market in New York State. This conduct is not legal and must stop. Individuals who do not cease run the risk of severe financial penalties. We look forward to providing updates to the public as we work towards accepting licenses in the future for the new legal industry we are building. The next order of business is the review and approval of the meeting minutes from the October 5th full Cannabis Control Board meeting. Before we get too much further into today's proceedings, I'd like to make a few brief remarks about the open meetings law. As stated at our first board meeting, the, can um, the Cannabis Control Board is subject to the open meetings law, which is intended to ensure the greatest levels of transparency and public participation in the affairs of government. Due to the ongoing pandemic, we have requested that members of the public join us via video conference, which we will continue to do to keep the public and members of this body safe. Now I'll read a brief statement on open meetings law into the record. Pursuant to chapter 417 of the laws of 2021 enacted on September 2nd, 2021, board members may fully participate in meetings via video conference from locations that are not open to the public, provided that the public has the ability to view or listen to such proceedings. And the meetings are recorded and later transcribed. The new law sunsets on January 15th, 2022. The public was provided with information on how to access the meeting within the public notice. A recording of this meeting together with the transcript will be available on the OCM website. Previous recordings and transcripts are archived on the OCM website as well. Please note, there is a designated tab on the website entitled Board Meetings, where this information is shared and stored. Taking a moment to appreciate that virtual accommodations have been serving us well thus far, that, um, that we have had over 2,600 individuals tune in to our last meeting. And we are remotely hosting board member Adam Perry from his office in Buffalo today. How are you? I would now like to move to approve the meeting minutes from the October 5th Cannabis Control Meeting. I move approval. We have a motion. Can it be second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Aye. All in favor. Thank you. No, no um, opposition, no abstentions. Board members, before you is a package of six potential hires representing senior positions of the Office of Cannabis Management. These candidates have been recommended by the executive director and their resumes and bios have been shared with you ahead of this meeting. May I present resolution 2021-05 affirming the staffing recommendations of the executive director. There, is there any discussion? Checking in with our remote board member, Mr. Perry. Any discussion? No, no discussion. May I have a motion to accept the resolution before us? I'll make that motion. Second? Second. Second by member Garcia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? No abstentions. So resolution 2021-05 passes. The next item on the agenda pertains to Home Grow, which further expands the medical cannabis program. The MRTA permits home cultivation of medical cannabis for patients in the medical cannabis program and imposed a six month deadline for the board to issue regulations outlining this process. Today, we are proud to present those proposed regulations. The home cultivation of medical cannabis will provide certified patients with, with a cost-effective means of obtaining cannabis through personal cultivation while creating a set of standards governing the conduct and activities relating to the personal cultivation of cannabis in line with the MRTA. A few key provisions to share about the regulations are on the slide before you, including certified patients must be 21 years of age and older to home grow cannabis with a limit of six plants per patient comprised of three mature and three immature plants. And please note, no household may cultivate more than 12 plants total, irrespective of the number of patients or individuals living therein. Designated caregivers caring for patients under 21 years of age or whose physical or cognitive impairments prevent them from cultivating cannabis may cultivate on behalf of the certified patient. And in line with the restrictions for individuals who grow their own cannabis, Designated caregivers can cultivate no more than six cannabis plants for any patient. However, caregivers cultivating for multiple patients may cultivate one additional cannabis plant for each subsequent patient. The proposed regulations impose a duty on patients to take reasonable measures to ensure that cannabis plants and any cannabis cultivated from such plants is not readily accessible to anyone under the age of 21. That means safe and responsible storage of the cannabis grown, as well as a responsibility to make sure the cultivation is performed out of reach and out of sight of youth. The proposed regulations are also necessary to set parameters regarding the processing of cannabis cultivated by certified patients and designated caregivers by prohibiting the use of any liquid or gas other than alcohol that has a flashpoint below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important to note that home cultivation for personal use for those not in the medical program is not permitted at this time. At this time, I want to make sure you are aware of the regulatory process in New York State. Assuming the board passes the proposed resolution to release the regulations, these regulations will then be published on the Department of State's register and a link will be made available on the OCM site. Once published, the regulations will be available for a 60-day public comment period. During this time, the public may submit comments to the Office of Cannabis Management on the details of the regulations.
The office will be updating its website to include information on how to submit a public comment. Following the public comment period, the office will conduct an assessment of all comments received and adjust the regulations as needed. Thereafter, the regulations will be officially filed. At this time, I'd like to offer the board an opportunity to ask Executive Director Chris Alexander a few questions on the proposed home cultivation of medical cannabis regulations. Um, Jen Metzger. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the regulations state that the cultivation of cannabis for personal use may only occur in or on the grounds of a person's private residence. And I just want to um, clarify and be sure that the addition of on the grounds is intended um, you know, to clarify that home cultivation of cannabis can occur outdoors. Yes, that is correct. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, the home cultivation of medical cannabis by certified patients or their designated caregivers can occur outdoors, provided that the other requirements of the proposed regulations, such as not being plainly viewed from the public, uh, by the public, including reasonable security devices, are adhered to, are, are being uh, you know, adhered to. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Member Chair. Garcia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Chris, the regula regulation package covers both medical and personal home cultivation for adults 21 and older. Does that mean that once these regulations are effective, everyone over 21 can grow at home? No. Uh, only certified patients or their designated caregivers participating in the medical cannabis program will be able to purchase seeds or immature plants legally from a registered organization. And therefore, New Yorkers who are not in the medical program cannot yet grow, on, grow at home. Thanks, Chris. I actually have a follow-up. Um, after the board votes to file these regulations, will they take effect immediately? Uh, no. Um, after the filing, after the board approves these regulations moving forward, uh, there will be a 60-day public comment period complying with, complying with the reg requirements of the New York State Administrative Procedure Act. Comments are strongly encouraged as public feedback is an extremely important aspect of the, for this topic. The office will then create a mechanism to um, submit public comments on the website. But please be on the, and please be on the lookout for that communication. After the public comment period, we will review the comments, potentially make changes based on those comments, and then send the final version uh, to the board for approval. Uh, updates on this process will be provided at, at subsequent meetings. Any additional questions? Um, Metzger and sure, then McDaniel. Okay. Chris, um, could you just clarify whether a medical home grow participant can sell or trade any of the surplus? No problem. Uh, I want to be very clear, uh, the unlicensed sale or trading of cannabis is prohibited in New York and home grow is not a license to do either. Uh, New York State, as the chair said, has not issued any licenses for adult use. This includes the sale or trade of cannabis cultivated under the home grow provisions as well as the idea of gifting uh, that we have seen cropping up across the state where a seller claims to be providing cannabis as a gift after selling uh, another commodity or service. That nor any other unlicensed sale is not allowed under the law, and we'll be working with our local partners to enforce it. Uh, anyone partake, partaking in this activity must stop. Member McDaniel. Thank you. Chris, my question is about the uh, landlords. Most people in New York City lease, mm -hmm. and so there's some uh, discussion here about what landlords can and cannot do as far as preventing people from growing medical or home marijuana. Can you just talk about that a little bit, expand, expand on that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the MRTA uh, includes a discrimination clause um, that prohibits discrimination by landlords based on uh, the appearance of use, actual use, participation in the industry or in the market, um, and that restricts their ability to deny somebody uh, with a le for a lease uh, for those reasons. Uh, that being said, um, you know they can include in their lease a restriction on the ability to cultivate at home. Um, but they cannot prevent a patient from participating in the medical program writ large. There still is space as well for landlords to have smoke-free policies and, and, you know, on their places of residence, but um, folks are protected from discrimination stemming from their participation in their market. Great. Thank you. Do you have another? Yes. I have another, yeah. Um, could you just talk a little bit more about why the proposed regulations pose a limit on the number of plants um, a patient can grow? Sure thing. Uh, the MRTA, MRTA sets a maximum allowable number of plants. 
um, at three mature and three immature. Um, so that was a statutory requirement of following the law's uh, direction there. Any additional questions? Um, Metzger? One more. Um, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. So the, um, the draft regulations have um, some, an important safety provision, and I'd just like you to talk about it a little bit. Um, it's the basically care, patients and caregivers can, um, let's see, da, 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 they're not permitted to process home cultivated cannabis by means of any liquid or gas other than alcohol that has a flash point below 100 degrees. If you could just talk about why that provision specifically is included. Absolutely. Uh, the, MR the MRTA uh, prohibits the use of these, some of these dangerous chemicals in the processing um, of cannabis at home, uh, particularly butane and some of the other dangerous items that we've seen used uh, by folks in home processing. But the use of these chemicals um, really should only be done in a controlled environment at, and not at home. And you can hurt yourself and others, and you know, so sophisticated processing techniques involving some of these flammable solvents should be left to licensed entities that have the proper safety mechanisms in place. And other states we've seen over, over the years, significant accidents, home explosions, uh, using some of these items, so we've taken a step to restrict that activity. That would be a comment more than a question. I think that this is an example of how your team has looked at other states and the experiences they have all had and learned from that. Because, you know, as you know, I talked about the other day, you know, Colorado had a real problem with folks with the butane and all of that piece. And I think you've done that in all regulations. So I just commend you all on really paying attention to what other states have done well and what other states haven't done so well. And thank you. Uh, bring us better regulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you for you. those comments. And thank you for those qu excellent questions. Um, now I would like to actually present Resolution 2021-06A. It's a resolution to permit the Office of Cannabis Management to file the proposed regulatory language for home cultivation of medical cannabis. I'm Any additional questions? You approve. I'm sorry. Approval. One, we have a motion. Second, please. I'll second. Metzger. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. None opposed, no abstentions. I will now turn the floor over to the Office of Cannabis Management's Executive Director, Chris Alexander, to provide his executive report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to focus this report on the expungement, uh, vacature, and resentencing provisions that were included in the MRTA that this office has prioritized. Uh, the MRTA reformed New York's criminal justice system and strives to end decades of disproportionate enforcement of New York's marijuana laws. A key component of these reforms is for individuals with previous convictions for activities that are no longer criminalized, for activities that are no longer criminalized. No one should have records for the same activities that are now legalized and businesses are generating profits from. Under the MRTA, the expungement process is automatic and requires no additional action by the individual. However, the relevant agencies have a two-year time frame to establish the necessary tools to execute that action. This is a similar time frame that was provided to the expungement authorized by the 2019 legislation. There were approximately 198,000 record expungements accomplished as part of the first round of marijuana expungements for the 2019 legislation, which I was very proud to be a part of. Building upon the 2019 measure, approximately 203,000 cannabis-related charges are presently being suppressed from criminal background searches and are in process of being expunged. When completed, the actions of these measures will have expunged the records of over 400,000 New Yorkers, a staggering reminder of the impact that cannabis, cannabis prohibition had on so many. The Department of Corrections and Community Supervision, or DOCS, also provided a clear breakdown of the impact of the reforms to New York, to New York State's Criminal Procedure Law Section 440.46 on individuals that were in its custody or under community supervision. All individuals who were in custody for solely a marijuana conviction have been released from custody and have had those convictions expunged. 34 individuals currently remain in custody or under supervision due to having an additional crime of conviction. In those cases, however, the marijuana conviction was expunged, but the additional crimes of conviction prevent their release. I would also note that an additional 413 local probation or split sentences were vacated as a result of the MRTA. This office will continue working with state and local partners to ensure a smooth process for this work. More information will be available at the URL noted in the slide above um, and, or, and on the Office of Court Administration's website. 
We will make sure to update the OCM website to include a link to this information as well. A reminder that the MRTA includes, includes express provisions to ensure that these individuals, the people behind these statistics, are prioritized for inclusion in the new industry and we are, that we are working to create. Our work here is far from done and I look forward to providing additional updates in this regard moving forward. Next, I'd like to provide an update as it relates to the municipal opt-out. Uh, cities, towns, and villages may pass a local law opting out of adult use cannabis retail dispensaries and or on-site consumption businesses from operating in their jurisdiction. Per the MRTA, local laws opting out must be passed by December 31st, 2021. Municipalities that opt out may, however, opt back in at any time. One point I want to make quite clear, municipalities are prohibited from opting out of other license types or adult use legalization itself meaning the consumption of cannabis by individuals 21 and over is legal regardless of whether or not the municipality opts out. Municipalities have reasonable control over provisions governing the local zoning and time, place, and manner, our restrictions of cannabis licenses operating in their jurisdiction, um, and municipalities that opt out will not receive any, however, municipalities that opt out will not receive any revenue from the local excise tax on the sale of adult use cannabis products as there will be no businesses operating in there. Uh, jurisdiction. The collection of this information is very important as it will help map where these license types can locate once the application process starts. The information for requested, the information requested will include the name from the municipality, will include the name of the municipality, a copy or link to the local law opting out, and contact information for the municipal officer or clerk submitting the information. Please look out for further updates from this office of how to submit um, a local opt out decision. Thank you, Chris. We are incredibly proud of the work that New York State has done through the expungement of cannabis-related crimes, and we look forward to the continued update on both matters. Thank you. Um, as a reminder, the, o the OCM website, cannabis.ny.gov, is live. The website is home to key overviews, fact sheets, and lots of helpful information. As pictured here on the slide, the homepage provides you a form to sign up for updates from the office. You can even tailor the updates to um, specific to your interest and how frequently you'd like to receive updates. So please sign up and continue to check in with us for information. Um, please note that the time, location, and a live stream link will be shared on CannabisNY.gov in advance of the next Cannabis Control Board meeting. A recording of today's meeting, the meeting minutes, and a transcript will be posted as well. All right, so that concludes today's business, and I thank you all for your participation. We are now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.